In 2008, development started on Wayland, the SQL or replacement for the X protocol for doing window management and graphical applications on Linux and other Unix-like operating systems. It has been more than a decade since then and only now Wayland is coming into maturity where it's widely used by the Linux world. This should strike you as extremely embarrassing. Dealing with graphics cards is maybe slightly more complicated, but in general, being able to have a windowing environment based on shared memory is something that should have taken months, not years. The evidence I have for this is that I have just recently made this windowing environment for my operating system, Serena, and it did not take that long at all. It's tremendously simpler than Wayland. Um, but, uh, you know, here I can show this off. I have this terminal. I can, of course, you know, um, start a shell from inside the shell. You know, now if I do stuff in here, you can see the standard out. It's happening. I can kill this program. The window closes. You know, we have windows. We have workspaces. I can full screen this. And uh, things work as you expect. I can print out uh, a documentation piece of documentation like this. Whoops. Say the um, compiler docs here. I can print that out. Works as you would expect. This was not hard to do. It's simple shared memory. There is a, uh, an OS feature here that's enabling this, which is slightly unique. Uh, to Serenum, but you could probably develop something reasonably similar if you tried on other Unix likes. Uh, of course, Serenum is not Unix like at all. That's why it's fundamentally better, I would argue, but that's neither here nor there. The way this works is I will exit out of now the this environment to talk about how this works and how maybe you could program this yourself if you are a Serenum user is we have, let's take a look at the shell. So the shell opens here um, in its main function and it runs this procedure. This is called find peep, P-I-I-P. -I -I this is process, into process procedure call or something. Uh, you specify this name. I'm going to rename this later, but for now, it's the window manager temp protocol. What happens is in the sort of process hierarchy, we have the window manager up here. Then it spawns the shell underneath. Let's see. Can I do this? Okay. It spawns the shell A. Okay. Shell A then asks, hey, I want to speak the window manager temp protocol. And so we do a walk up the um, process hierarchy. We go to the first parent, then the second parent, third parent, looking for somebody who advertises that they speak this protocol. Uh, in this case, that's just the window manager. So it's a single hop here. Then a connection is established between, between these two. Um, so there's, it's hard to draw, but you, you can imagine that there's a connection that gets put in where, where both parties are, are aware of each other and we get this alien handle back. Now, the way this alien handle works is that we use this to perform syscalls, right? People are used to the idea of syscalls. You do a syscall into the kernel. It doesn't stuff. It comes back. Here we do a syscall, but into the parent process. So the syscall here is very basic. We literally just say window manager temp get window. Now, if I find this, it's somewhere down here. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, here we go. 
this one is this one is actually a dud. This isn't used anymore. This is how simple it is. The assembly. We say get window. We put the into register T1. We put the ID of the the syscall that's not a syscall. Um, and then and then we 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 call this syscall, but it actually then goes into the other process. It goes into the pro other process, and then it comes back. Okay, and what's what happens then is the the parent process the the parent process the window manager sees ah somebody is connecting first of all somebody has established this connection and then I'm receiving a syscall into me requesting to create a new window so it creates the new window there is a backing struct some memory some shared memory that's built that includes the window buffers a um, circular buffer for key presses. Uh, that looks like this. I have this is named creatively. It's called the dumb frame. And then what's given back as to the shell process is this handle. So the allocation handle. It then you then use this. You map this into your address space. And now two the both of the processes have shared memory. They can use to communicate. And then the rendering is as simple as you know, both parties touch this struct to communicate on rendering. The Here's the ring buffer for the key presses. Here are the two frame buffers. For speed, there are these dirty bits that are used to say, what did I actually change? So that the window manager can do very, very excessive partial rendering for more speed. It, we communicate that we coordinate our frames to this frame counter, and then there's the width and height. Very, very easy. Um, you can see this file, the shell, is in total 1,300 lines. The um, the window manager is even less at only 900 lines, right? And here you can see this is what um, the entry point for that syscall is. We hit the syscall. If the ID is zero, then call get window, which goes here, and then calls this procedure down here. We get like from which process. This is not a global PID. This is a, a PID like in the namespace of the parent, um, etc. So what then happens is if we have, like I said before, the window manager. The window manager spawns a shell, shell A, and then shell A spawns shell B. Well, now when shell B says, hey, I want to talk to the window manager, or I want to speak to the this protocol, it goes first to shell A, says, does shell A advertise supporting this protocol? No, okay, then I go to the next one. Does the window manager support this? Yes, it does. And then the communication goes past the shell A. Um, and things work as normal. Now, there is... Um, on Serena, we don't support... We don't support VT100 terminal spec type control codes. There's none of that bullshit. Instead, there. this is a simple... Simple. That you can't do anything fancy by putting things in standard app. The plan is I still want to be able to do terminal UIs, but there's no reason really why your terminal UI can't be as good as just the normal UI. So the plan is to have the terminal also advertise a different protocol, which is the sort of 2E protocol. And what what will happen then is say if I am in the shell here, if I start a new shell, okay. If I instead of starting a shell, started the uh, the my editor, my Vim like or what what you have now, then what you actually want to happen is a sort of it's like um, window swallowing on on DWM, where I open this graphical application and it first looks not for the window manager protocol. 
it first looks for the TUI protocol and says, hey, am I running in one of these terminals? If so, I would like to just draw graphics in that window. And so it establishes communication to the terminal. If it doesn't detect that there is a terminal, it would then try the more general window manager protocol. Um, of course, you could override this with a flag or however you want to do it for test. You probably want that for testing purposes. But what this allows is you can have you can have programs that run in the terminal but are fully fledged graphical applications. They don't have to, you know, be this really horrible experience. They can they can interact with copy and paste correctly. You don't have to do they they can do anything they want, which is exactly what we want. And it's one of these things where breaking from a Unix legacy and doing things designing things fresh from scratch allows you to make much better decisions and have a much more interesting computing environment than the legacy that we've inherited. Now, um, for completeness, I guess we'll take a look at the, the code on the window manager side as well. So uh, let's see here. And and you'll be like you'll be surprised it isn't that complicated. Although it's um, might change a little bit. We'll see. But it it's <laughs> it's essentially this: is you call register register PIIP with the protocol, the entry point, and then some where the stack pointer should be. So you obviously have to have a pre-allocated stack for this. Um, when we start doing more multi-threading stuff, we might, um, this will probably be extended to say that you can have multiple stacks. So you have maybe like four slots and then four sub processes can call in at the same time. And then, you know, otherwise they'd have to block and wait because you can only handle so many at once. Um, yeah, it's not really that, that complicated at all. Um, this something approximating this window manager, I will be making available to Serenum users on the Discord. I mean, it won't be a secure upload. So if you're not a Serenum owner yet, I guess you'll, yeah. I mean, might as well, you, you can have access to that as well. I'll be zipping up this, uh, this folder here. Uh, yeah, this guy, the window manager folder. Um, zipping that up so that it'll be source code for the for the stuff. If you're not a Serenum user, you don't have the compiler, so you probably can't build it. Although, to be safe, I'm going to ship a compiler binary with it because I can't remember if I've fixed some bug in the compiler since or while working on this. That, that could easily have happened. Anyway... The uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that this will go out to Serenum users. Then the next step for me is I need to re-implement this editor you've seen me use in this uh, the previous environment. This guy, um, this editor, everybody's favorite scriptor editor. I need to re-implement this as an editor in the windowing environment so we can have that. I also need to add a run menu. All the Linux nerds will know what a run menu is it's so that you can hit, you know, uh, mod R and have, it's like D menu, but it will be, you know, it should just be a part of your window manager, in my opinion. Um, a run menu. And then one thing I haven't implemented in this editor is I can't, there's no history yet. And there also isn't any, um, like I can't type C or B. I need to run the actual binary itself. And the reason for that is, the, is you know, the with the original presentation I did of Serena, a lot of people have been confused about, oh, how, does, how do you do like config files or like settings, uh, stuff like that, like, how do normal applications have access to, to their own space? 
And I think that's probably worth doing now for the window manager. Um, so what will happen is that all the sort of registered applications, these aren't shell programs, but registered applications such as the terminal, such as the editor, such as any other graphical program you may install or put in so it shows up in your run menu. These things, the convention is going to be that the window manager passes to them a mutable access to a config directory as the first program argument. Um, and then probably a configurable amount of other arguments you need this for, say when you open a new shell here, it needs to get access to a directory because otherwise it can't do anything. So you need something there. Um, but the reason for this is that, oh, what, what would be cool about this is that then programs can, they have access to their settings for like, for configuration and stuff. And uh, that allows us to do convenient settings. It, it also means that I had one of the reasons I haven't added a history, a shell history to the previous old shell, the boot shell, is because that would like the more files you add, the the more sort of com it just gets kind of complicated. But I feel like that will be tremendously simplified when we have this config directory because then the history file can simply be one of many uh, mutable files that the shell always has access to. Uh, and one of the advantages of this design as well, just speaking from a general Serenum perspective, but in the context of, for example, the shell, is if you move machines or move installs, all you have to do to bring your config exactly, exactly bring your config with you is that you just copy that one config directory and you know you have a guarantee that any program you're running, any graphical program, that if it's the same binary and it's that same config directory with the same data in it, it should run exactly the same. And you just don't get uh, any hard guarantees like that on Linux or Windows because programs can access anything on the system. And so programs will, programs are very, as we know from experience, very, very, very good at just putting all kinds of garbage all over your system in various like dot files and uh, secret things and special configs and they went and talked to this thing and it auto configured and it's just it's just a mess it's crazy and we solve that craziness by by this enforced isolation and um enforced discipline essentially on how programs run that makes make things tremendously more secure and tremendously more sane in terms of configuration like i'm sorry I know some people have a lot of fun configuring their Linux systems, but it shouldn't take you, like if you want to configure your Linux, or if you want to configure your computer in general to be exactly as you want it, that's fine. But if it takes 50 hours to have something reasonable, that's actually a failure of the software. It should be good, generally good, on first install for most people. And then if you want to make it better, that should, absolutely, you should be able to do that. But then it should be easy to do that and do it once and then bring that config with you. And that's where there is a massive, massive failure today on um, just computers in general. I mean, both Linux and Windows fail at this. Okay, anyway, yeah, so if you want to, um, if you want to preview this window manager, it'll be avail available through the Discord, to join the Discord, you go to samhsmith.com slash serenum. And then on there, there's a link to the Discord. Um, also, if you, I mean, you won't be able to run it if you don't have a serenum. So maybe go buy one of them at taberna.shop. Uh, I will try to get your order shipped out as quick as possible. All right, see you all when I have made more stuff to show off.